بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful لا اله الا الله لا والسماء بنيناها بأيد وإنا لموسعون والأرض فرشناها فنعم الماهدون ومن كل شيء خلقنا زوجين لعلكم تذكرون ففروا إلى الله إني لكم منه نذير مبين كذلك ما أتى الذين من قبلهم من رسول إلا قالوا ساحر أو مجنون أتواصوا به بل هم قوم طاغون فتول عنهم فما أنت بملوم وذكر فإن الذكرى تنفع المؤمنين وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون ما أريد منهم من رزق وما أريد أن يطعمون إن الله هو الرزاق ذو القوة المتين وَإِن فَإِنَّ لِلَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا ذَنُوبًا مِثْلَ ذَنُوبِ أَصْحَابِهِمْ فَلَا يَسْتَعْجِلُونَ فَوَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ يَوْمِهِمُ الَّذِي يُوعَدُونَ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We always commence by praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى No matter how much we praise him it will not be sufficient but we try our best and we ask him to accept it from us we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all his household, his companions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them all. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single one of us and our offspring, those to come up to the day of Qiyamah, up to the last day. And we ask the Almighty to grant us steadfastness. Beloved brothers and sisters, beautiful moment here in the city of Doha, in this beautiful masjid of Fanar, where, mashallah, the brothers and sisters have come in large numbers. Really, we need to bear in mind one thing. And I'd like to start with this because it is an important issue. As I enter or exit, mashallah, a lot of people would like to greet and shake hands and so on. Remember, the sole purpose of that is to greet or perhaps to shake hands. Never have a belief that now that I've shaken my hands, I'm not going to wash it for a few weeks. I've had this, people have said it in the past. Believe me, we are mere mortals. We are human beings just like one another. And yes, we would like to greet one another. We want to know one another. But remember one thing, do not let that belief go beyond the limit because this evening's discussion is extremely important 
It is rotating around the purpose of creation. Why was creation created? And this is why I read the verses to commence, which made mention of the creation of mankind and jinkind. But we will go a step further and speak about entire creation. So we need to know why were we made? It's a question that has to be asked by everyone. No human being can be a person who has a brain and not ask themselves, why am I here? It's impossible for us to live a life without asking what's the purpose of it. Because we witness, we see, we watch people being born, we watch people live a life and we watch people die. So where were they before they were born? Where were we? Where are those who've passed away? Where have they gone? These are important, pertinent questions that need answers. And the one who created us is the one who has provided these answers. But let's take a look at what some people believe. It's important to look at what some people say so that we can understand the goodness we are upon. Firstly, you have a group of people who say, you know what? We are here just by coincidence, mere coincidence. There is no creator. There is nothing of that nature. It's just multiplication of organisms. And we've just been here after a big bang that happened out of nature. And so if you ask them, when you die, where are you going to go? They give you different answers. Some of them say, when you die, it's the end of everything. That's it. مَا هِيَ إِلَّا حَيَاتُنَا الدُّنْيَا نَمُوتُ وَنَحِيَا The Quran speaks about the people of Quraysh who used to say, it's just our life. Death and life is all just the only thing that's going to happen to us. After that, it's all over. So they say, enjoy yourself as much as you can because you're just going to live once. Have you heard the statement flying around YOLO? You only live once. The, the youth know what that means. That is... A statement being uttered by people who are trying to promote following desires. Do as you please because you only live once. Who is going to, you know, take account of your deeds? There's nothing of that nature. So this is one category of people. A second category of people, they say, you know what? We were made just coincidentally. But when we die, we will be transferred into a different creature depending on how we lived our lives some of them might even admit that okay there is a creator but he has kept us rotating so when you die if you were good you become a bird and if you were bad you become a snake yes believe me this is what people are believing today so much so that i have heard it with these ears of mine when we passed a house of a funeral we went there one day and there were some non-muslims who were passing they saw a bird on you know, a few doves on the roof. And I heard the lady say, look at where she's gone. Subhanallah. And I'm thinking to myself, what did I hear? This bird was in existence before the person passed away. But this is what some people think. So I wonder who they would think the snakes are and the scorpions are and so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us iman and may he grant us belief. And the intellect we have, wallahi, if we use it correctly, it will lead us to Islam. Take a look at Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu. He was a warrior, very intelligent man. And what happened is, when he had fought the Muslims several times, and you know, the battle of Uhud took place and so on, then there was the treaty of Hudaybiyah, and thereafter the Prophet sallallahu calls his brother and asks him a question. He says, where is Khalid? You know, Khalid. And the discussion rotated around this man. Where is he and what is he doing? Until the Prophet ﷺ says, Ma mithlu Khalidin ya juhalul Islam. A person as intelligent as Khalid, he cannot be ignorant of Islam. He cannot be ignorant of the correctness of this beautiful faith of submission that teaches you to submit to your maker alone. Subhanallah. So if you now go back, you will find the question itself is so beautiful. Why were we created? Wow, what a beautiful question. It is the main question that I am supposed to ask and you in your lives and in mine. Because without the answer of that, we would have defeated the whole purpose of being here. So, 
The Almighty did not only create mankind and say, right, I've created you, you're on earth and that's it. But he created so many other things, countless other things, things we will know and things we will not know. Things that existed before us and things that shall exist after us. Creatures that were created and creatures that are being created, subhanallah, meaning multiplied and reproduced. There are people who will come whom we will never know. Same applies. There are creatures that will come that we may never see, subhanallah. But Allah has described for us why he created it. So why should I look at the words of Allah to get an answer? Why? Someone might ask, why do I, do I not look at other things to get an answer? Well, to be honest, if you're an intelligent person, initially you might say, okay, let me not look at what the Almighty has said. Let me not look at the fact that there is a creator. You know, you have some atheists who be, believe there is no creator. So let's take those into consideration and ask a question. So what are we going to look at in order to figure out why we were made? Let's begin to look at the rest of creation or whatever is around us. When you see things around you, you notice there are mountains. Wow. There are rivers, there are seas, there are oceans, there are stars, there are planets. There are so many things. You, when you dig into the mountain, you find gold and silver, which has value. You find platinum, you find diamonds, amazing. You find steel, the ore and so on. And at the same time, People can change the steel from one formation to another in order to benefit from it to create perhaps an object like we have the plastic in front of us, the electricity and so on. All this is taken from the creation, from something around us. It cannot have come just by luck and by chance. If I were to tell you that you see the huge billboard that says red tag sale you know there is a sale at red tag huge billboard it says sale at red tag did someone put it there or did it just come there someone put it there if you told me that you know what there is a huge red tag sign or poster in my backyard suddenly and i ask you what happened you say it's nature it is nature. It was put there on its own. Tomorrow there might be one in your yard. Be careful. I will look at you, you will look at me, and we will start laughing like what we did just now. It's foolish. You can never ever have such a big sign and such a big poster with, and, and it's not something complicated. It's something light, it's easy. A lot of us can make these signs. But you cannot have it suddenly find itself there and you say, this is just nature that has brought it. The question we ask is, what is more sophisticated? Is it a human being or a poster? A human being. Human being is far more sophisticated than a poster. So if a human being is more sophisticated than a poster, and we believe that a poster that is less sophisticated cannot come there on its own by nature, then how can we believe that human beings came here on their own by nature? Subhanallah. Have you followed what I said? Simple, simple logic. Today you are wearing your clothing. Can you come and say, brother, you are wearing this bisht of yours. How do you have it? And I say, nature. I just stood there and suddenly, boom, it was there. <laughs> can you think that for a moment? But this is something simple. People have made it. They have sewn it. It's something that is understood, logical. But... Something that is far more sophisticated. We are still saying nature, nature. And intelligent people who have brains are saying nature, nature. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our souls. May he grant us goodness. And may he guide humanity at large. So we believe that it is not just nature. Because Allah, whoever made us, has given us a brain. From that brain we realize that there are things which are less important that we believe firmly can never ever have come just by nature. So those which are more important and more sophisticated, our own minds will lead us to believing there is a maker. Someone put it there. Someone put me here. I was somewhere before I was born. 
and I am somewhere right now and I am going somewhere. I am going somewhere after I die. A few days ago, I was reading a beautiful article of a discussion, a presumed discussion between twins who are in the womb of a mother. Very interesting. Now, obviously, people might say this discussion did not take place. You know, the reality is it is a presumed discussion in order to try and understand and explain how Mankind is sometimes deceived without realizing that he was in a stage where he perhaps today cannot remember and recall. Like Allah says in Surah Al-Dahr, Beautifully put, where Allah is reminding us has there not come a time upon, upon man before when he was nothing to be mentioned? Nothing at all. Today, people refer to me as he. You know, I'm a masculine. So are you, mashallah. And the, the, the sisters referred to as she. And something which doesn't have a brain, we refer to it as it. There was a time when I was neither a he, nor a she, nor an it. Not to be mentioned. When was that? Mo before I was born, not to be mentioned. And I cannot recall. Can any one of you remember how life was in the womb of your mothers? Allahu Akbar, not one, not one. So a discussion between the two, one is saying, wow, you know what? This is a beautiful life. It's so cozy. In where? In the womb. This is so cozy. And the other one is saying, yeah, man, it's warm. Look, we're being fed automatically. And the one says, you know, these eyes, one day they're going to open. He says, nah, they can't open. No ways. He says, we're going to go out of here. He says, what do you mean? There is life outside this womb. No, there's no life outside the womb. Not at all. Life outside the womb? Not at all. So the other one says, no. We will eat from this mouth one day. He says, impossible. We've got an umbilical cord. We connected. And that's how we have been chosen to be fed. So... He says, no, I am telling you, we are going to leave this place. We will be eating food and we will be using our eyes and we will be breathing something known as air. But the other one says, no ways, impossible. That cannot happen. What happens? One day after this, this, this presumed discussion, the two are born. Suddenly the eyes are open, the lungs come. One screams, the other one screams. Next thing they have feet, they are being fed. And subhanallah, whatever was said was a reality. Today, what we are saying about the hereafter is also a reality. When people tell you, you will be fed with a different type of a food, you will be having a body that will be perfect. You will be having a mind. You will have a paradise. People are saying, no ways, no ways. One day when it comes, subhanallah, then we will sit with each other and say, do you remember we spoke about it in Qatar? And you say, yes, subhanallah. Amazing. So if you think of the stages of man, you will realize that Allah has kept something within man that will point him towards the creator. One might ask, but why did Allah create us? For what? Why? So Allah says, the verses I read before you, وَمَا خَلَقُتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind and jinn kind except for the purpose of them worshipping me. Wow. When we hear this verse, a lot of people start thinking, Oh, that means I can't have my car. I'm not allowed to have my perfumes. I can't have my watches. You know, I just need to engage in worship. That's why Allah made me. People don't understand. That the term worship means to live your life in a way that whatever you do is within what Allah has allowed you to do. That's it. If you do things within what Allah has allowed you to do, because you are doing them to abstain from that which Allah did not allow you to do, they become acts of worship. Automatically. Amazing. So you use your eyes. Mashallah. Enjoy. But don't look at that which you're not supposed to. And if your eyes happen to fall upon that, immediately say, Ya Allah, forgive me. Amazing. And we have the enjoyment of different types of food.
But we don't make that the purpose of existence. Allah will test us. One day, burnt food will be presented. One day, food will be presented with too much salt. One day, food will be presented as it is coming to you, it falls onto your clothes. All this is a test of Allah. Trying to watch, is your main aim the food? Or are you understanding that you are here in order to react to situations in a way that pleases your maker? So Allah has given us two things. Very important aspects. More than two, but I'm only mentioning two. One, Allah says, فِطَرَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي فَطَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا The term fitra. The purity upon which man has been created. People translate it differently. Let's call it purity. The nature. The hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describes it. He says, مَا مِن مَوْلُودٍ إِلَّا وَيُولَدُ عَلَى الْفِطْرَةِ فَأَبَوَاهُ يُهَوِّدَانِهِ أَوْ يُنَصِّرَانِهِ أَوْ يُمَجِّسَانِهِ A beautiful narration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, there is no child who is born except that they are born upon purity, upon cleanliness, meaning upon that natural birth that Allah has made them or created them upon. If they were to remain upon that purity, it would lead them to Allah automatically. But their parents are the ones who contaminate the purity and divert them by either making them, whether it is Christian or Jewish or worshipping the stars or the fire or whatever else it is. Because this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for this reason, at an early age, a person is known as marfu' anhu al-qalam. A person whom the pen has been lifted upon. Your deeds are not yet being written. Whatever you do, we are still giving you a time of incubation. What is the incubation time? When you become mature, when you become an adult, you are now responsible to begin to ask the questions. What are the questions? Why am I here? Question number one. Why was I created? So now, in order to answer that, Allah has given you the second thing that we are speaking about. Your brain. Subhanallah. This is why Allah says in Surah Tutin, لَقَدْ خَلَقُنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمٍ We have created man in the best of postures. Allah has given us the best posture from all His creation. Which means today, look at the animals. Some of them have, you know, four legs. And then you have those that look different, you know, it's difficult for them to maneuver and so on. We have five fingers, we have the eyes in a specific place, the nose and so on. And I've always said, by Allah saying, I have created man upon the best posture, He is challenging us to come up even in our brains with a better posture than ours. It's a challenge. If Allah tells you this is the best, that means nothing else can be better. That's what it means. So you think for a moment, for a moment, these eyes I have, is there any better position that I can put them upon in my body or on my body that would actually show that it's a better posture? Think of it. This nose you have, is there any better place that you can think in your brain to put that nose on your body in order for you to come up with something better? The answer is no. No. Anyone who can, put up your hand. We want to hear what you have to say. Really. Your five fingers. Is there anyone who can choose to place the thumb somewhere else? Or to take your fingers and put them at the bottom of your elbows and perhaps we can be eating, you know. I don't know how. Subhanallah. It is Allah. He created us. Ahsani taqweem. The best of postures. And He gave us a mind and a brain which He kept right at the top. Right at the top. Above your eyes and perhaps just at the back here. Right at the top. Imagine if the brain was at the feet. I wonder what would have happened. May Allah protect us. This is something we need to think about. Because Allah says that whatever He has created, He expects us to ponder over the creation in order to recognize Him. So you have the fitra, the purity. You have the mind, this aql, this brain that Allah has given you. 
and the two of them will lead you by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ask questions. Now you begin to look at the rest of the creatures. The wind is blowing. If I were to fly up, if I have oxygen that I'm breathing right now, if I were to fly up 50,000 feet above sea level, there will come a place where I will not be able to breathe because of the pressure being very light, no oxygen. You know, when you're flying in an aircraft, the most I've heard is about 45,000 feet. I've never heard them say 50, 55, 60,000 feet. I've never heard that. And then they tell you, we may drop a mask for an oxygen flow. I'm sure you've heard that. And you look and you start thinking, I hope that never happens. That is man. But have you thought, so if I go higher, there is no oxygen. My place is on earth. Allah created me from the earth and he's kept me on the earth. And whatever is beneficial for me is on the earth. The minute I go higher than that, there are other creatures of Allah that he has kept for reasons of me to recognize him. And perhaps to benefit from those creatures in a different way. So everything that has been made, there is a purpose. And the purpose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Surah Al-Baqarah, right at the beginning, Allah says, It is He who has created for you, O man, everything that is on the earth. Subhanallah. Everything that is on the earth is created for you, so that you can recognize Allah, you can benefit from some of what we have created, different types of benefit, and at the same time, you can worship Allah alone, realizing and recognizing His greatness and the fact that He has created everything. So now we take a look at another verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ardi wa akhtila fi layli wa nahari la ayati li ulil albab. Indeed, in the creation of the skies and the earth and in the rotation of the night and the day and in the creation of all the other creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there are signs for those with intellect al-albab those who have intellect those who have a brain and are bothered to use it use it thoroughly so now you look at the skies and you tell yourself, so why are these stars created? One might think, oh, you know, the stars are created because there is life out there that perhaps we will benefit from and so on. People have died and have not benefited from life on the stars. I have been reading researches about the stars and I found that the closest star is four and a half light years away. And just to let you know what that means, that means tonight. When we look up in the skies of Doha and we see a star, it was there four and a half years ago or more. And we are seeing it delayed. Do you know what that means? Well, you can use your mind and go and study and see what I said. The star you see there could have vanished a long time ago. It could be dead. What you are seeing is the light how far it is, it takes four and a half years to come to me here. I am seeing it, I am so weak and so small and so delayed that I am only seeing the light four and a half years after it's finished, it's gone. Imagine delayed action. We are on live streaming right now on the net. Perhaps they will be seeing us a few seconds late, maybe a minute later in a country like Zimbabwe, which is a bit slow. But at the same time, subhanallah, we do not realize that we witness things four and a half years later. Imagine if someone says live streaming, you'll only be able to see it four and a half years after today. He will laugh at them. He'll say, what are you talking about? By that time, I'll have three children. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. But people don't realize the creation of Allah. Allah says, tafakkaru. Think about those stars, the creation of Allah. لَخَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَكْبَرُ مِنْ خَلْقِ النَّاسِ Allahu Akbar The creation of the skies and the earth far greater than the creation of just mankind. Yet man does not know 
Man refuses sometimes to think and to ponder. So man doesn't realize, why have I been made? Yet Allah says, I made you to worship me and I made everything around you to recognize me. That's the answer. I made you, O oh man, so that you can worship me. You can do what I have instructed and I have prepared for you something very, very great. I have prepared a paradise post death. You are definitely going to go somewhere that is far better and much more complete than anything that you have ever come across or thought. Because Allah says, we've just given you a mind to test you, you a mind to test you. But this mind, whatever it has thought about, we have kept for you something far beyond that mind. This is why the description of paradise in the narration of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, فِيهَا مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرٍ In it, there is that which no eyes have seen, no ears have heard, and it has not even crossed the mind of a person. You know, they say, وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرٍ It has not even crossed the mind or the heart of a person. Which means, Allah made me for just a few years. If this was the life, it would not have been 70 years. It would have been more than that. Far more. If this was everything, we would not be getting old. Like I said in one of my lectures recently, I read an article which tried to suggest that oxygen is poisonous. An article that tried to suggest oxygen is poisonous. Oxygen kills you. So I was attracted by the heading. I said, what are they talking about? Do you know what they said? They said, oxygen kills you in 70 years. Keep breathing it, 70 years later you're dead. And I looked and I said, people are crazy. They don't realize that no matter what you do, you will age. There is no other form of gas that you breathe and you last forever. If it was there, believe me, people would have come up with it a long time ago. This is why shaitan and the devil, what did he tell Adam alayhi salatu wasalam? He says, هَلْ أَدُلُّكَ عَلَىٰ شَجَرَةِ الْخُلْدِ وَمُلْكٍ لَا يَبْلَىٰ Should I not show you a tree? You eat from it and you will last forever. You, you, there will be eternity for you. And you will have kingdom that will not deplete. So today, people think, you see the sustenance we have, the wealth we have, the life we have. Yes, it is our duty to go out and earn within what is permissible. But at the same time, don't ever think you are going to achieve more by disobeying Allah. Don't think you will get more happiness by disobeying Allah. No. They tried it a long time ago with Adam to say, we're going to show you something that was the disobedience of Allah. If you disobey Allah, you're going to get wealthy, you're going to get power, and you're going to get life that will be eternal. So what happened? Through Allah's plan, Adam, may peace be upon him, he tried it. When he tried it, instead of getting what he was promised by shaitan, he got the opposite. And what was that? That was the immediate discussion between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did you do? How could you have done that? And then he sought forgiveness and that story carries on. But today, if I believe that in this life, I have been made in order to enjoy absolutely everything. I would not be suffering pain. Why does Allah make us become old? Because he wants to show you, you were young. We made you strong. We gave you strength, power. Then we made you weak again. And we took you away. The Quran speaks about it. Allah الذي خلقكم من ضعف ثم جعل من بعد ضعف قوة ثم جعل من بعد قوة ضعفا وشيبا. Allah has created you from weakness. He took you to strength. And after that, he, he took you to another level which had two weaknesses. What were they? One was the weakness of the body. And the other is the weakness of the mind. You find when a person lives very long, yes, they are intelligent. But sometimes... A lot of people at a certain age, they become forgetful. This is why, you know, we are young, inshallah. People don't like to admit that they're growing old. Have you noticed that? But 
What happens is when you forget something, what do you say? I'm becoming old. You forget something, you say, sorry, what was your phone number again? He says, but I told you just now. He says, sorry, I'm becoming old. Phone numbers nowadays are on the phone. Subhanallah. We no longer remember our own number. People are asking me, what's your number? I said, I don't know. And they're looking at me like, don't lie. But I don't know. Believe me. Why? Because the phone has made us lazy. But going back to what we are saying, if you take a careful look at Allah's plan, He says, Shayba. Shayba means the gray hairs. So when you start seeing gray hairs, it's a sign to you to tell you, hey, 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 you're now going to a new level. What's the new level? Come on, recognize your maker because you're going to return to him. One day I was speaking to a man. Very interesting discussion on an aircraft. Normally, you know, we travel quite a bit, so you get to meet people. And when they ask you, what do you do? Some, you know, you tell them, no, I, I'm a religious person. I try to, you know, teach people a little bit here and there myself as well. Remember in Islam, the beauty is the person teaching you, he, he is an equal. You might respect him for the knowledge, but he is an equal. He also may have faults. He would also need correction. He would also, you know, he is a human being. And at the same time, what we need to know is that we do not confess our sins to a priest. No, we do not confess our sins to this person or that. We confess to our maker alone. So I was discussing with this man. He tells me, I'm an atheist. I said, okay, so what do you believe? He says, I believe when we die, we are just returned to nature. So I said, okay, when you die, what have you told those whom you leave behind to do? He says, I will be cremated. I will be cremated. So I had a beautiful discussion with him, explaining to him the damage and the harm of being cremated. He was not happy initially. But then he said, wow, you got me thinking. What did I tell him? I told him, brother, you see, we are buried. We are taught how to be buried from the time of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. We believe that you, we were created from soil. And the evidence for that is when we are returned to the soil, we decompose completely into the soil such that the remnants, there is almost nil or nothing. You know, there is Ajbud Ganab, the hadith speaks of one small portion of the, the spine that remains in order to resurrect a person. But Allah does not even need that. But it speaks of that. So when we are buried, have you noticed we leave a little gap of oxygen? What are we taught? We were taught just leave that gap. People say, oh, it's for this reason and that reason. One of the reasons is in order to decompose, you need oxygen. And in order for that oxygen to be enough, more than two times the size of your body is actually left with the oxygen in it so that the body is decomposed. When you dig a grave, a proper grave, after some time, you will find everything has returned to the soil. But when there has been a mass grave where people were buried without oxygen remaining or without a portion of oxygen, their bodies do not decompose thoroughly. In fact, you will see the skulls and skeletons years later in a mass grave. Have you thought of it? This man says, but I'm going to be cremated. I said, now when you cremate a person, what are you doing? You are applying tremendous heat and tremendous pressure to your body. We will not talk right now about whether you can feel it or not. But I will tell you that will not return to the soil. The reason is it becomes ash. Ash and soil are two different things completely. If you were to be decomposed without tremendous heat and pressure, you will decompose within the soil. The minute you apply heat and pressure, you become ash. That ash, what happens to it? It does not return to the soil. In fact, it remains separated. I said, but the, the point I'd like to ask you is, how do you know that you're not going to feel when people are burning you? He says, because medicine tells us that you don't feel anymore. I said, what if someone has felt it and they could not come back to tell you that we felt it? He says, I'll see when I go. I said, it will be too late. <laughs> no answer. I'll see when I go. It's too late because people are saying, okay, you're going to burn me. And I start saying, but you want the punishment already whilst you're still leaving the world, not even got to the life after, you know, the year after, so to speak, in the proper sense. And then he looks at me and he says, but you've got me thinking. And I told him something else. I said, okay, my brother, listen to me. Let's say, for example, what you are saying 
and what I am saying. Put it to the litmus test. If what you are saying is true, then when we die, we will just be decomposed and that's it, everything is over. What is the possibility and probability of what I am saying to be true? Is there any probability? He says, no, no chance. I said, okay, when I die, if I was a good man who worshipped whoever made me, whoever made me, I call him Allah. I call him Allah, Allah the worshipped one. And I say he is one, alone, no worship to be rendered to anyone besides Al-Khaliq, besides the one who made me. I put my head on the ground for him. I render an act of worship for him. Whatever I do is for him. So if I were to worship my maker and say, Oh you who made me, have mercy on me. Oh you whom I am going to return to when I die, have mercy on me. So that is my statement on one hand. And on your side, you do whatever you want and you're not prepared and whatever. When we die, if what you said was right, I did not lose anything because I would have just died and decomposed. This is just a statement to make people think. If what you said was right, I did not lose anything because I decomposed. But if what I have said was right, you have lost everything. It's a fact. So why don't you just come and adopt what I've said? Because even in that case, you will lose nothing. Amazing. So follow some rules, follow some regulations and continue to say, Oh you whom I'm going to return to, have mercy upon me the day I return to you. When you return to someone, like you are saying, you may, there may be a probability according to them. But you would have lost everything if what I said was true. He said, well, I'm going to think about it and think about it seriously. He says, you're the first person who's made me shaky in what I believe. I said, you know what? That means you have not spoken to enough people because even a child will tell you that there is a maker. Even a child will tell you that there is a maker. Amazing. This is why my beloved brothers and sisters, look at the creation around you. It should lead you to Allah. It was made in order for you to be to benefit from. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Allahu alladhi sakhara lakum al-bahra li tajriya al-fulku fihi bi amri wa li tabtagu min fadlihi wa la'allakum tashkurun. He mentions three points. He says Allah is the one who has created for you the sea, the water, the oceans. He created it for you so that the ships can move on it. This is just one reason. The ships can move on it. One reason. And so that you can earn from his virtue, from the sustenance. You can fish. You can achieve a lot of fish and corals and so many other things that will come from the oceans. Amazing. So Allah says, we made it for you. Why for you? So that you can use it for transport. And so that you can benefit from the water. You can benefit from the marine life. You can benefit from the corals and the pearls and so many other things that will come out of it. Amazing. And in order that you may be thankful. So that you may be thankful. Thankful for what? That Allah has made your life in this world easy. Now let me stop there before I get to the next verse. The next verse is very important, but I want to pause for a moment. If I were to tell you that you have a college examination from 8 o'clock to half past 9, what will you do? You come to the college. Are you allowed to bring the books which have the answers? No. Those books are outside. And you come in with your pen and you sit and you write. When you are thirsty, some examination rooms provide water. You are lucky. Some will tell you no water. One and a half hours you can sit. If you say, I need to go to the loo, they will tell you no. You should have gone before. But some of them might allow you. They make it comfortable. Some might come with a meal. Some might come with all extras. What Allah did for us, He's got us in this huge examination room for 60 to 70 years, plus minus. And he has said, I will make your life comfortable. Allahu Akbar. You will have things you'll enjoy whilst you're writing your exam. I am right now in an examination and so are you. 
And in my exam, the one who is testing me, he's allowed me to eat and drink. He's allowed me to walk and to get married. He's allowed me to have children and to do things. Amazing. Imagine your exam room and people say, you know what, you're in jail, but we'll allow you to bring all four of your wives in your jail. <laughs> I think everyone would be in jail. Allah protect us and grant us goodness. This is a huge, not jail, but examination where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put us in here. And he says, don't worry, I will give you lots of rules and regulations to make life easy for you. So if someone harms you, you can take them to the court of justice so that they don't harm you. You have a dignity, you will have a name, you will have an identity, you have rights and so on. Allah says, I've provided this for you. So now in the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسَخَّرَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا مِّنْ Allah is the one who has created whatever is in the skies and the earth for you, O oh man. For you. Whatever is in it is for you. And these verses, Allah has shown us what's in the skies as well for us. So now I look at the stars and I start saying, okay, so these stars, what are they for? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers that again in the Quran. He says that he has created the stars in order for them to be guiding lights and in order to beautify the, the sky. When you look at the sky, if it is pitch black dark, it would be far scarier than what it is right now. Allah says we beautified it for you. How did we beautify it for you? By placing stars there. Then Allah says, and we have kept those stars as well to pelt the devil. That is Allah's plan. He has kept it for whatever purpose he wants. But we have a sign. Look at the stars. Do you know the star, one star is bigger than the earth. Millions and billions of times. But to you, what does it appear like? Something small, insignificant, that flashes in the dark, so much so, a lot of them we cannot see without telescope. Or without some form of astronomical equipment. This is Allah. So Allah says, do you think all this is created for nothing? Do you think you are created without purpose? أَيَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانُ suda. Does man think he's going to be left just purposeless, without anything? Aimless, darting from here to there without a guide. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us. He gave us languages we can speak. The languages themselves are a sign of the presence of the maker. He created us in order for us to worship him. He would like us to enjoy a paradise. But he said, this paradise will only be for those who deserve. One might say, well, why would he say that? In anything, say for example, you have a business. Let me give you an example. You know, we all have been given a slight bit of a brain by Allah. May Allah grant us good use of it. Say you have an airline and the airline has a frequent flyer program. Why? Because it wants to reward those who really fly. Those who are loyal. They call them loyal. So now what happens is you are happy because, wow, I got a blue card. Hey, I'm happy. I'm part of the airline. When I book, my booking is more important than yours. Why? I'm loyal. So now one man will show you a silver card and say, I got a silver one. You say, oh, I feel small. Why? You are more loyal than I am. And then someone else shows you a gold card. And when they show you a gold card, you say, oh, the one with the silver is now small. He's more loyal. And then you have another one showing you a platinum card. And he tells you, what do you mean? I have access first class. Allahu Akbar. This is what it is. Why? You're loyal. So why did they decide to differentiate between people yet there could be one man richer than all of those who have how many ever cards they want but they will not give him that preferential treatment even though he has the wealth because he lacks loyalty. Do you understand? So it was a system put in place in order to vet people to see who is more deserving and who has a higher rank and a lower. Wallahi the example of Allah is far higher than that. Each one of us has our own little cards. Some of us have no card. Some human beings have no card. They don't worship Allah. 
Some have a blue card. It's just an example. Some have a blue card. Their loyalty is so much, alhamdulillah. There are others who are more loyal. They have more acts of worship. They have much more. They have a silver card. Some have a gold and some have a platinum. No matter how much wealth a person has, it does not guarantee that they will have a card because it does not depict loyalty in any way. You need to be loyal to your maker. I need to worship Allah. So Allah says, I created the paradise. Yes, indeed. But I will give it to my worshippers who deserve it. Ibadi as salihin Those of my worshippers who are good, who have done good deeds, the pious from amongst my worshippers. So I want to ask you a question, and this is going to be a question that we should take home. Every day as I'm living, do I realize that I was created by Allah in order to achieve the highest rank possible before I die, so that when I die, I can enjoy paradise forever and ever. Subhanallah. Yesterday I spoke, or it was the day before, when I spoke in a masjid, and I made mention of something interesting that someone sent me an email regarding. I said, brothers and sisters, the soul you have has been given a uniform known as the body. The soul you have has been given a uniform known as the body. This uniform, you shall remove it when your job is over and you carry on. So I'm going to take the body out and leave it in the earth. My soul carries on. Al-Barzakh. And after that, it goes to Allah. I will respond and I go to paradise. May Allah not even make me from those who enter hellfire. And all of us, may Allah grant us Jannah. Through His mercy. A lot of the times our deeds are not worth it. But we are hoping in the mercy of our maker because we believe. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. So, what have you done for the day when you will have to remove your uniform? Think about it. What have you done for the day when your uniform will be taken out because your job will be over here? Your test, your exam time is over. You are still writing your paper to do as many answers as you can. And the invigilator tells you, do you know what time is up? You need to walk out. You can't say, no, 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 give me two more minutes. They say, we will disqualify you. Allah's example is far higher than that. We are writing an exam. Perhaps it's not with a pen, but it's with life. And this is why we say, whatever you do, oh man, may Allah bless us all. Whatever we do, let us try and bear in mind, it is Allah we are answerable to. If that is the case, you have understood the whole purpose of creation. And if that is not the case, you have lost the whole purpose of creation. A fool is he who thinks, that I'm just going to be here for a few years and after that, you know, don't worry, we'll see what happens. When I get there, I'll plead with Allah. What do you know? Beautiful verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where He says, Repentance is not for a person who continues to do evil until the point of death. When death comes to him, he says, now I surrender and now I ask for forgiveness. Allah says, too late. Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Fir'aun, the Pharaoh, the one who used to call himself a god, he also died. The one who said, I am a god. وَقَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ يَا أَيُّهَا الْمَلَأُ مَا عَلِمْتُ لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرِي Allah says, Fir'aun told his chiefs, O oh my chiefs, O oh my people, I do not know of a God for you besides me. I am the God. And yet when he was dying, he says, that now I repent. And he says, I now believe in the God of Moses and Aaron, in the Rabb of Musa and Harun. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, is it now that you want to turn and yet you were a transgressor in the past and from amongst those who used to spread corruption now when it is too late you want to turn i want to ask myself a question my brothers and sisters, we need to turn to Allah before it is too late. A person who sins and who thinks that I will get enjoyment, that enjoyment will turn into regret unless they repent to Allah. 
There is no point. You have lost the plot. You have lost the entire purpose of creation. If you think that I can just go and usurp this, I can do that, do as I please. No. Allah has created us in order that we worship Him. And He has kept the signs so much so that if you look at the signs around you and the signs within you, you will be able to recognize your Maker. There are some times when people say, I've lost all hope. And you tell them, brother, call out to Allah. And keep on calling out to Allah. And continue with conviction to call out to Allah. And they come to you after about a month and say, Wallahi, my problem was solved. Who did that for you? Your maker. There is a power high above that we need to acknowledge. There is indeed a power. And if you take a look at even those who do not believe in a God, they come so many times in their lives when they have to acknowledge that there is a superior power. Still, if they have been rejected, they will tell you, I know there is a superior power, but I don't believe in God. <laughs> Stupid. I know that one plus one is two, but I don't believe it's two. Doesn't make sense. Allahu Akbar. It's foolish. Allah sends to us messengers from the very beginning with a consistent message, beautiful message. When we say Islam started with Adam, what do we mean? People think Islam started with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No, it started with Adam. May peace be upon him. The first of our species. Every single messenger was given the core message which was identical to the next one. The belief system was always identical. But the rules and regulations might have changed with the changing of time. So how exactly to pray? It was different from prophet to prophet. Perhaps what was permissible and prohibited, different from prophet to prophet. But your belief was always the same. Amantu billah wa malaikati wa kutubi wa rusuli wal yawmil akhir wal qadr. All these things, they were the same from the very beginning right to the end. All the prophets taught the same thing. They taught that Allah is one. They taught that there have been messages before us. And besides Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they've taught that messengers will come after us as well. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the last one. So he said, I am the final messenger. After me is the hour. They have all taught him about the angels. They have taught about the last day. They have taught about good and bad faith that comes from Allah. Why is this message consistent? Because the creator has created mankind and he is the same creator who created Adam, who created myself and who created Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Same creator. So it's all the same. And we need these messages. One might say, how can I recognize that these are messengers? You need to study. You need to go deep into it. You need to look into it. And you, you will come up with answers. You will see the connection between the messengers. And you will see them. You know, sometimes man is foolish. He doesn't understand instruction. You need an explanation. You see, it, it reminds me of the example. This is just an example of the cuff. In order to show how sometimes man doesn't really understand. I'm sure you've heard of the example where they say, you know, uh, the example of a man who perhaps when the doctor tells him, you know, shake well before uh, administering this medication. So he takes his child and he shakes the child well before he actually administers the medication, not realizing that it's the medication you're supposed to shake well. You see, sometimes people need to be told it's the medication you shake, not the patient. People sometimes don't understand. Like one man, the example of the man. Remember, this is an example of a man. You know, don't come and tell me, Sheikh, you're telling a lie. It's not. It's actually an example to make us think. This is what it is. So it's important for us to know that man with their minds, when they are given examples, they really appreciate. They understand, they acknowledge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given many examples. His are the highest. To be honest, if you take a look at this, what I'm about to say, you will learn something. And that is the need to understand the importance of revelation. Why is it that revelation is so important? There are many ways to answer it. Let me tell you, this man goes trying to lose weight, very big, and he wants to lose weight. So he tells the doctor, I need to lose weight. The doctor says, no problem. It will take you 30 days. You cut out this type of food and you need something 
that really will melt up the fat that you have. He says, what is that? He says, do me a favor, run 10 kilometers a day. And after 30 days, phone me and tell me how much weight you've lost. So this man says, okay, I will run 10 kilometers a day. 30 days later, he phones the doctor. He says, doctor, this is who it is. The doctor says, how are you feeling? Have you lost your weight? He says, I've lost all my weight, but I have one problem. I ran 10 kilometers a day. I am now 300 kilometers away from home. <laughs> what a fool. What a fool. And this is why we say, brother, you need guidance. You need to know the details. If you don't know, you ask. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Subhan Rabbi al-A'la. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَالزُّبُرِ Ask those who know. Ask those who have the knowledge of revelation. If you do not know, ask those who have knowledge. Who will answer your question based on what was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes man is like this. We think we know. But we haven't yet opened revelation to understand. Allah cannot just create us without sending us someone to remind us what is going on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Inshallah, we will meet again tomorrow. By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will continue with a slightly different touch. And we hope and pray that we've benefited slightly at least from what we've said this evening. Remember my brothers and sisters, whatever you do, prepare for the day you meet with Allah. Because that is what will result in ultimate success. That is definitely the ultimate success. The day I am given my book on my right hand, that is the day I can clearly say I have succeeded on this day. May Allah grant that to myself and yourselves. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, forgive our shortcomings. Remember one important point, never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Turn to Him, recognize Him. Look at the creation around you and ask yourself, Subhan al-Khaliq, if this is the creation of Allah, how great is the Creator? Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanak Allahum wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta.